Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. No, this is not a sailing episode. This is gonna be a gear review episode. Why? Well, I'm getting a whole bunch of new gear. I'm spending money like a drunken sailor trying to get ready for this 10,000 nautical mile sailing voyage from South Africa to the United States. I'll be on that boat for probably about eight weeks and I wanted to get the very best gear I could for being a travel filmmaker, vlogger slash filmmaker, and I wanted to have the best cinematic footage. Now, I'll throw a little, a little clip on here from yesterday when I still owned my Crane 2. It was a beast, it was huge, it, it was great, it was strong, it did everything I wanted it to do, but try and get on a plane with that thing jammed in your backpack. I mean, that thing's huge. And then walking around in a town with that thing just intimidates the crap out of people. Even when I'm here in the Thousand Islands sailing around and we go to shore, I walk around with that thing, especially if I throw a monitor on there and a shotgun microphone and all that stuff, which I would have, maybe not the monitor, but I'd have the shotgun microphone for sure. And it scares the crap out of people. So I went ahead and I decided I'm gonna buy the Weeble Lab. And I bought it with my own money. Just so you know, this kind of first impressions review is my review. Zion has nothing to do with it. They didn't give me a dime. They didn't send me a draw or a gimbal. They didn't send me nothing. So I can say whatever I want, even if it's super mean, but hopefully it's not super mean. Anyways, that is what's my crane too. This is the uh, Weeble. I know, crazy small, isn't it? I mean, compare that to the crane too. This is gonna hold a full frame camera like my a7 III or my GH5 with my speed booster and my Nikon lenses and all that. It's a heavy kit. So my crane too worked. Is this gonna work? I don't know, I haven't tested it yet. This is first impressions. My first impression though, is it feels a little bit like a toy. <laughs> it's got metal from about here up and the batteries are in here. So there's a bit of weight here, but this just feels, put me in the mic, feels hollow. And the only other thing that gives it a little bit of girth and weight is this tripod that it comes with. Now I didn't get, I got the basic kit. I didn't get the quick release plates for it. If you've watched other YouTubers, almost everybody's saying when you get one of these, you're gonna get the quick release plates because screwing it in here, and then when you wanna do the underslung mode, screwing it in here, uh, it's just a pain. So we will see. When I bought this, I was looking at Amazon and the quick release plates in Canada are $29 each. Zion should have just thrown them in for the amount of money we spend. These, this is $799 Canadian. Now, what made me jump on it was they actually, one seller had a $100 coupon, so I got it for $6.99, no tax, no delivery charges. Had to jump all over it, especially since the guy who bought my crane too gave me $650 Canadian. So I, uh, quote, upgraded to this for 50 bucks. Pretty good, right? So let's hope, fingers crossed, it actually does a good job, because my crane too did a good job, but was not travel friendly. If this does a good job, it's clearly travel friendly, and I'm gonna be a happy boy. So I've already uh, balanced my a7 III on this with the 16 to 35 f4. This is a nice lens for vlogging and just general walk around purposes, so that's what I set it up for. I'm having the 24 millimeter G Master 1.4 coming. I've heard that it balances on here. Another YouTuber that I follow had his 24 millimeter on here. It's a bigger, bigger aperture, kind of heavier lens, I think, than this. So uh, we'll see. When I get it, I'll, I'll test it out. This is the one we're gonna walk around today with, the 16 to 35 F4, and uh, we'll see how it goes. One thing I do like is this lock feature. Now, when they say it's locked, I was kind of hoping it felt locked, <laughs> like you crank it down and it's locked. No, it's jiggly. It's locked, but it's jiggly. But the lock thing certainly helps. Once I have my camera on, let's put it on. Okay, once you got your camera mounted on here and you wanna walk around, look, it being locked is awesome because your, your camera's already balanced and yet you don't feel like you've got a Viking war hammer way on you. Like here's, a, here's my Crane M. Picture a much bigger version of this to be my Crane 2. And you got your camera on here and you're walking around and it's like an implement of war. It just goes crazy. <laughs> so yeah, being able to just walk around with it locked and not have it do this on you is, is yeah, it's a godsend. So. I'm looking forward to that because that's often what happens when you're walking around in a town. You see something you like, you wanna film it, you, you, know, you unlock all this and you should be still balanced. And you film it and then you wanna lock up and walk around. You don't wanna have this thing constantly balancing your camera when you're not filming, right? Just lock it up and you're on your way. So good feature, Zion. Oh, and by the way, I'm calling you Zion because that's how it should be pronounced, not Zion. There's no J in it, it's a Z, so it's Zion. Plus it sounds way cooler. What kind of gimbal do you have? I've got a Zion. Sounds cool, right? 
What kind of gimbal do you got? I got a Jun. Not as cool. Not, not as cool. I pronounce it Zion. A lot of people on YouTube pronounce it Zion. Let's just stick with that. Let's go with that. All right. Anyways, let's go out, test this thing, see how it looks. Okay, so there you go. There's what it looks like when it's on. I guess I should show you that instead of it just being locked. Word to the wise, unless you're like, really clamp this thing down. If you have it locked and you start swinging around a lot, when you're done and you're unlocked again, it wasn't quite balanced. Probably my fault, because I really guess I need to really, really crank down the locks. Otherwise, everything jiggles slightly out of balance and I had to rebalance it. So there you go. Just, you know, give it everything you got when you want to crank it down. So uh, yeah, so this, the only thing, a couple of things I know. Pan follow is kind of like the default, which means you can go left and right, but you can't go up and down. The only way to go up and down to have the full follow mode is to click this little trigger at the front, and then you can go full follow mode up, down, right, left. Uh, yeah, I'm not in love with that because the crane, you could just put it in full follow mode and then you could put it on a, a pole or you could just do whatever you want and the thing just followed you. Now, until you press that trigger, you can't do full follow mode. And that really, really is gonna suck when you're doing the underslung mode, when this is up here. Again, I really do need those quick release plates because this is not super quick. But anyways, if you're going from regular uh, pistol mode to underslung mode, which is like this. How are you supposed to hold it like this and still press this trigger down here? Right, it's a two-handed operation then. So hopefully Zion changes that in a firmware update and picks one of these multiple buttons all over here to turn it into follow mode, just on and off. Click it on, leave it on. So yeah, we're gonna go outside. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. I got my new uh, Ceramonic wireless lavalier mics. This is the second uh, transmitter. I've got the one transmitter on me, but just wanted to give you a, a size thing. The receiver, which is on top of my Panasonic GH5, is about the same size as this. Picture it on a hot shoe, and you see the problem. You cannot put a shotgun mic or, or a wireless lavalier mic on your camera. The other thing that might have been a problem is these Ceramonic uh, transmitters and receivers are built like a tank. I mean, they're made of steel. They weigh a ton. So I was kind of wondering if throwing this on top would have, even if I had the room, would have really made the camera top heavy. So that kind of sucks because I was kind of hoping I'd be able to go around filming and have myself mic'd with a lavalier mic. But unless I never plan to do underslung mode, yeah, no way any shotgun mic is gonna fit on top of your camera with underslung mode. So keep that in mind if you're thinking like I did, that you're gonna be able to walk around and film with a shotgun mic while you're on a gimbal, well, Maybe, if you only want to do pistol mode the whole time and you never, ever want to like get the motor up this high, then maybe you could do it. The other problem with it is you better have a pretty light shotgun mic. <laughs> Certainly not one of these bricks of steel because it's gonna make your camera really, really top heavy then. And this gimbal, they say it's like 6.5 pounds of, of carrying capacity, but don't trust that number. From what I've read and what I've seen online, this camera is a good size for it. If you start trying to throw a big ass Canon camera with accessory battery grip and all that other stuff on there, it's not gonna work on this. So don't do it. Okay, here I am in my coat because I'm gonna take you outside to the forest near my house. And believe it or not, even though it's March 19th, there's snow banks literally up to my hips out there. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to my own personal hell. It's not usually this bad. Usually by this point, it's mostly all gone, the snow. Any Americans who live in the southern United States, it's always funny when you meet them and they ask if we live in igloos. No, we don't live in igloos. But you're gonna see March 19th and go, no, maybe pushing the igloo thing isn't that far-fetched because it's, it's crazy out there. You'll see it in a second. But anyways, before we go, I just wanted to show you the different modes. If you haven't seen anything on a Weeble Lab before now, where have you been? Because this is not a brand new uh, gimbal. Of course, as I mentioned, press the trigger. You got the follow, full follow mode. Don't press the trigger and you've only got pan follow mode. You can't do up and down. Uh, you've got this go mode, which I'll never use. It's this super fast, super responsive mode. Never gonna use it. You got the lock mode, which means no matter what you do, up, down, left, right, nothing happens. The other mode is when you hit POV, which is in the back here. So you've got so many buttons, they're all over the place on this thing. POV mode turns it into full point of view mode, which means not only can you go left and right, up and down. Actually, this is probably as good as you're gonna get to follow mode. Huh, now that I think about it, POV mode is follow mode, just with more, more accessories. You can go side to side. So okay, Zion, I'm gonna take back the 
slap I gave you about no lock, uh, no follow mode. Point POV mode is the new follow mode. So there you go. Anyways, there's that. And then to get yourself back, let's say you're all wonky and you wanna get back to uh, a normal straight flat mode, you hit the trigger twice and there you go. Now I hear if you hit POV mode, ah, there it is, three to, uh, two times the POV mode, now you're in that vortex mode, which means you can do the whole spinny, doodly thing. Again, I don't see you using it that often. Most people on YouTube say the same thing. Now you gotta double click to get it to go back to normal. Yeah, I mean, that vortex thing's kind of fun. I think if I was going through like a tunnel or a really like, I don't know, tight space, it might be fun to spin as you go through it. But yeah, it's a kind of a novelty uh, thing, but hey, it's there in case you ever want it. So without any further ado, oh, and yeah, there's one more mode. You gotta, let me get this right. One, two, three. Hey, it's vloggy selfie mode. So there you go. So I'll definitely use that mode. Um, it's the only thing, as you can see, there's no flip out screen on the uh, A7 III, which kind of sucks because now I'm like, I think I'm in focus. I think I'm in frame. I love my GH5 for the flip out screen. If Sony ever comes out with an A7 IV with a flip out screen, oh, I'll have to open my pocketbook yet again and buy it because I really do miss not being able to see the screen of what I've got. Yeah. Anyways, let's go out, check out the force and see how smooth this bad boy is. Ciao for now. Okay, here we are walking down a wintry trail. I'm not trying to do the ninja walk either, so hopefully it's still somewhat stable. Probably the worst possible scenario for trying to be smooth is walking in snow because it's very, very uneven. All right, let's turn around so you don't look at my face anymore. Triple click, one, two, three, and away you go. So this is the path. It's beautiful in the summer. Kind of stark and like uh, dead. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to test is I'm going to take the uh, take it out of pistol mode and put it in underslung mode, and uh, see how that works out. Also, by the way, I still have my lavalier mic on. I just forgot to take it off, but clearly my lavalier receiver is back on my GH5 in my house. So you're listening to me through the inbuilt microphone on the camera, and I do feel it's a bit breezy. So might sound windy. And you know what? I'm going to go through the side trail because uh, the trees will protect us from the wind. Let's see that. Whoa. Hey, a little icy in here, eh? That's really <laughs> okay, this, this trail in here is not snow. It's like ice. So. If I wipe out and uh, lay here unconscious with the camera running for a while, you'll know why. So, what can we do in here? We can do POV mode. First of all, let's try the underslung mode. <laughs> you can't do selfie mode after having the thing in underslung mode because it'll be right in the way of the camera. I really need those quick release plates. What a pain these things are to switch. $29 times two, here I come. Yeah, so the underslung mode is okay. I, I can't do the ninja walk in here, it's icy as hell. Uh, so it's probably not the best, but yeah, let's see how it looks when I get back to the editing. What else we want to do? Oh, vortex mode, just for shits and giggles. Okay, well, it's not the easiest place to try and do uh, smooth walking when you're on an icy trail with just regular running shoes on. So probably not the best example. But what have I learned today? This is the first kind of like initial thoughts on it. It's light. It seems to handle my camera perfectly. There hasn't been any shakes or shimmers. Yeah, what else can I say? Uh, vortex mode, eh, you know, it's there if you need it, but I probably won't use it. 
the super fast go mode can't ever imagine using it i know some people say they'll use it for um, fast wipes from one scene to another where they whip the camera aside it's not really my style so i don't know if i'll use that but i gotta say this thing is light and compact so it's gonna be great to throw in my backpack when i'm doing that voyage when we get off the boat to go to shore it won't be so intense on people to pull out a big huge gimbal it won't be so hard on my shoulders yeah so far i think it's been a good purchase thank god because i already sold my uh crane too so had this totally sucked would have been an issue so back to the car hopefully you enjoyed this episode i know it's kind of brief well not brief i know it's kind of uh basic because it's really just my first initial thoughts on it what i'm going to do is as i have more time with it and i get to play with some of the features i didn't even get into the zion play app which is where you can tweak the motors and the features and stuff do time lapses other things like that when i get more time with it i'll do another like after a few weeks what are my thoughts episode so hopefully you enjoyed this one if so give it a thumbs up if you want to follow along as i go on that big sailing voyage and you want to check out some of the other gear i'm going to bring on the channel hit that subscribe button and that's pretty much it so until next time this is craig signing off wishing you safe cruising and go out and make some memories ciao for now Which car is sexier, my car or Janice's car? My car or Janice's car? Comment below.